Explode up, make it come all at the same time. It's football time for the Flyers. Rick Chamberlain has Dayton ready for another run at a Pioneer Football League title. Get with the depth, square up, that's it. Now for a preview of the 2014 season, here's your host, Mike Hartsock. There I care, I care, that's it. Good. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to another Dayton Flyers football season. Your coach Rick Chamberlain joins us for a preview of the 2014 season. A coach coming off a 7-4 and four year a year ago. This is a veteran group coming back, picked second in the conference. We do, Mike, especially on offense. We have a number of uh, young men who played a lot for us last year, starting with Will Bardo, our quarterback, and at the receiver position, Connor, and then Connor Kasser at our running back position. So we're very strong on offense. Defense, we lost some very good players, especially in the secondary. Kyle Sabetic, who's playing in the NFL right now with the Giants. Uh, but we've been coming along for the last two weeks and really uh, showing some good things. Now, before we take a look at some of the highlights from last year, it was a 7-4 and four season that I think you thought could have been better. You let a couple of games slip away from you late. Uh, most definitely there. We were uh, rolling along, uh, got through our non-conference 2-1, and one, then stubbed our toe against Maris there, in which we had the lead at halftime and let that get away. Then we got on a roll and, and beating San Diego in a double overtime game and moving along there. And then in the Butler game, we had Connor Kasser and Will Bardo go down. And in the second half, Butler came back to get us, and then Drake got us the following week without Will and Connor. All right, let's go back to 2013 and check out the highlights as the Flyers, as we said, uh, came out and won two of the first three games. You lost at Youngstown State, but then bounced back nicely. Although here, Duquesne hits a long play on you to grab a lead, but... That didn't last long. It didn't. And then we started rolling there offensively with uh, Connor and, and uh, Ross Smith and uh, Will Bardo here running the ball. And what it turned out to be was Willie Will, our kicker in the second half, kicking three field goals to help us win that game. Yeah, Will, uh, an outstanding kicker who is back and is who is highly touted. Your defense stepped up late in this game and was able to... Uh, to pull it out. Now, this game is the Marist game, and it was uh, it was a struggle, no question about it. It was, and uh, Chucky Looney, their quarterback, who ended up being the Offensive Player of the Year in our conference, uh, had an outstanding second half, and uh, really, he was the difference. He made some big plays just like this long run here, and uh, we just were not able to overcome that uh, surge that they had. Now, the Flyers have to go to Marist this year. We're going to look at the schedule a little bit later, but uh, Looney was matched by Will Bardo. Hey, he can run a little bit, too. He can. And in this San Diego, Will Bardo really came up big. He was the PFL Offensive Player of the Week for that particular game in a double overtime. Here's the last play of the game, a fourth down play. And what an exciting night for the Flyer fans. It's always big to win a PFL game, but it's even a little bit better when you can beat San Diego. And then you, you move it to a little bit better angle. This is the Butler game. And... This is a game that got away. Got away from us. We had a nice halftime lead, but Butler being the kind of uh, opponent that we know we're going to see each and every week, they kept battling back. And like I said, Will Bardo goes out in the second half. Connor Kasser didn't play from the first quarter on. And then Valpo, Bardo's back in the lineup and basically, though, just standing back there throwing the ball. That's right. His ankle was heavily taped, and Gary Hunter, our speedster, scored a couple touchdowns on passes and kick returns. Our defense played really well with an interception here by our senior, Colin Monier, who turns it for a touchdown. It was a nice way to wrap up the season with a win, Mike. And you said, you talked about Gary Hunter. Here's the kick return to start the second half as the Flyers go on to a big win at Valpo to cap off a 7-4 and four season on the year. But uh, like we said, left a little bit out there that, that needs to be taken care it, of. It was, Mike. I, the way we were playing at the start of the season, I thought we were clicking very well in offense and defense. And the Marist game, uh, we just didn't play well enough the second half. And then I believe with the injuries that we had there, our offense production went down, and it hurt us against Butler and Drake. So you get some respect, though, as we check out the Pioneer Football League pre preseason standings uh, you were the only one of the top five teams that didn't get a first place vote though San Diego got the most they are preseason number one Dayton preseason number two then Jacksonville Butler and Drake and I know you always say that any of those top five could win 
Could it be any deeper than that this year? I tell you, each year it gets a little deeper, Mike. I'm telling you, the Moorheads, the Valparaisos, the Davidsons, the Campbells, they're getting better each year, and uh, that's what makes our conference so competitive. You look at that group that was up there. You have to go to San Diego this year. You do not play Jacksonville in conference this season. You go to Butler. And I believe Drake is, is Drake is here. Is here. And yeah. the, but we got to go to Maris, yeah, yeah. Uh, which uh, I think is going to be just as strong. They have 34 seniors at Maris, 14 or fifth year guys. So you know they're going to be strong. It's not going to be an easy road at all. Good thing about this season for you as a coach and and, and your staff, a lot of fifth year guys back, and uh, and two of those are captains. One on the offensive side of the ball, one on the defensive side of the ball. The one we're going to focus on first is the offensive guy. Will Bardo, fifth-year quarterback. It just comes with the position. Guys are going to look to you <coughs> when uh, a tough a tough time comes along, and you can never get too high or too low. Got to stay pretty even keeled. You know they're going to look to you when you're in a bad time. They're going to look to you when things go well. So you always have to stay balanced and never get too high or too low. Bardo comes into his final season with plenty of experience. 2014 is his fourth year as the Flyers' starting quarterback. I just feel like, you know, in camp, we have, we put we had our whole offense in within the first week, and we've never really done that, so I feel like we're really ahead of where we've ever been since I've been here. Um, we're now, you know, we've got the offense in, we've really just been repping plays for the last week, so in that aspect, we're just ahead. Will has always been a dual threat at his position, and admittedly a better runner than a passer, something he hopes improves this season. I've really been able to work a lot on pocket passing this summer. I've worked on throwing more than anything. And um, yeah, I don't see anything changing. Um, but I have been working a lot on the passing game. And just because, you know, the running part is more of a natural instinct than throwing is one thing that I've had to work on a little bit more. Bardo has plenty of weapons around him this season, whether he wants to throw the ball or just hand it off. There have been times when I've come in before, and it's natural just to not feel completely comfortable back there. But um, I've had a lot of time to work with these guys, and I've got all the um, respect, and I believe in them, and I know they're going to get the job done. So I'm excited about them. Coming off a 7-4 and four campaign, Dayton is picked to finish second in the Pioneer Football League, which to some might sound like an honor, but to others... That is motivation. I mean... Sure, second place doesn't sound bad, but nobody wants to finish second. Second's just as good as last, right? So um, we're here to win first place. And, you know, we feel good about being picked second, sure, but it doesn't mean anything unless you go out and prove it, and we want to be first place. Coming in here, we were kind of, it was kind of handed to us. We felt like we were here, we'll just win just because we're the Dayton Flyers. That's not how it is. We found that out pretty quick. So um, we've got a lot to prove, and we've got, our class has a lot to prove. This level of football is not like your BCS uh, type of football where a fifth year just means an extra year of scholarship. This is this means an extra year of big money for mom and dad. We always say that, Mike, that uh, for a, a young man to come to the University of Dayton to play football, it takes sacrifices for parents. And if they're going to play a fifth year, it means another semester of uh, schooling, of housing, of food. But... They, they enjoy it, and they want it to be a part of their experience. All right, time for us to take a break. When we come back, though, we'll break down the Flyers' schedule. That and more when our preview of the 2014 Flyer football season continues. Welcome back. I'm Mike Hartslock along with Rick Chamberlain. Coach, as we look at the schedule, which uh, you start uh, a little bit later than some teams do, but scheduling's tough because you got to factor in, okay, when are we going to have an off, off week? Are we going to have a bye week at all? That's a difficult thing, isn't it? It is. You have to look at uh, what teams are available to play, where do you want to play some when you start into your conference play, when are up teams available. It, it's a mix and match type of system that you have to go with. Let's take a look at the early part of the season. Now, this this year it's Georgetown, you're thinking Georgetown, Kentucky, no, no, no. Uh, it's the Georgetown Hoyas out of Washington, D.C. 
which takes the place of Youngstown State on the schedule. And, and why Georgetown? How did that fit? How that came about was, uh, again, with the opportunity with open dates there and, and a fine institution academically. Everybody knows that. They play in the Patriot League, which is a very strong uh, FCS conference, scholarship conference. And uh, the name, Georgetown Hoyas, uh, yeah. that's, that's pretty good. And so that's why we were able to work that out. Weeks two and three are schools that we know very well. Uh, Duquesne, you're at Duquesne, and then uh, you've got Robert Morris coming back in here. And uh, that Robert Morris game, Mike, it'll be a little different for us uh, uh, since we've been playing him in 1995 because Mr. Joe Walton, their longtime coach, is no longer there. Uh, Banasek is their new head coach, been on the staff. So that'll be interesting to see what their team's like. Three games into the season, you get a week off before you uh, go have Davidson come to town. Yeah, and uh, hopefully at that time you're 3-0 and and you're feeling good and you need a little break there, catch your breath, uh, it's heal up some injuries possibly, and then head into the conference play. Continuing down that schedule, uh, Davidson, then at Marist, a very big game in the Pioneer Football League. It is, uh, and to add to that game, it's their homecoming, Mike. And it is so crowded up at Poughkeepsie, New York, that we got to stay 40 minutes from this wow. town because there was no hotel rooms. So we have to adjust to that. And then Moorhead State, uh, good old grudge match with the Eagles, and, the, and that ought to be fun. Then looking at the back half of the schedule, San Diego come, or you go to San Diego. It's a 9 o'clock game. Dayton time out there. Right, and it's always been that way, a little cooler. They get great crowds at night and always a tough opponent, as everybody knows. Home games with Valpo and Drake. You go to Butler and wrap things up with Campbell. We haven't seen Campbell on the schedule for, what, three seasons? Three seasons there, and uh, that's a good thing for us to be able to finish at home, Mike. It's been a long time, I think something like five years since we've been able to open at home and to end at home. So that'll be a nice touch. So you look at that schedule overall and you think, okay, this is a good match, a good mix of, of what we need. It is. It is, Eric. The, the tough ones are going to be, of course, your road games. For any team, it's, it's tougher to play on the road. But when you got to go to San Diego, Maris, Butler, those are going to be tough, tough road games. All right. We've met one of the Flyer captains for this season. When we come back on the preseason preview, we will meet the second guy, Pat Dowd, on the defensive line when we come back. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us for this preview of the 2014 Dayton Flyer football season. And Rick Chamberlain, as you, as you look at for leaders on a football team, you let your players pick the captains. And, and they've picked a couple of guys, a couple of fifth-year seniors. We talked to Will Bardo already. But on the defensive side, Pat Dowd, he's a mean one up front. He is. Comes from a great uh, high school up in Cleveland there and uh, tough state championships that he's been associated with. And we allow our players to vote for him because they're the ones who make the decision. Who are the leaders of their team? And Pat Dowd has really been a strong one for us throughout camp. And obviously, leaders can't be quiet, guys. If you're going to be a leader, you got to be able to step up and, and let everybody know what you're thinking. And that's for sure. And Pat fits that bill. Will's more of the intellect, the quarterback, kind of sit back. He'll speak when he needs to. But uh, Pat Dowd, he's the emotional leader on defense for sure. Pat Dowd is the Flyers' captain on the defensive side. It's hard to put into words what it means. Um, of all the accolades that I've earned throughout my career, none will ever mean as much to me as being voted a captain by my teammates. Um, that vote of confidence from them really, uh, really shows a lot to how they feel about me, and, uh, and I really uh, appreciate that vote from them. As far as on the field, uh, I've stepped into a leadership role early in my career, but this year obviously it means more having the title. So having the title, you know, you know the young guys are looking up to you more, and uh, on and off the field it puts more pressure on you to set that example, but I welcome the opportunity to be that example. Uh, I enjoy the pressure. And, uh, and I'm ready to lead this team. Last season, Dowd helped anchor a defense that struggled at times. In the Flyers' four losses, opponents averaged 32 points a game. In all but one of those, Dayton lost the lead. We gave up a lot of points in the second half, and that's going to be a big focus this year. We need to finish games. You know, we come out strong. You know, look at the Butler game, the Maris game. We were up in both of those games, and Drake even. We were up in all three of those games, but uh, we gave up too many points late in the game, and you know, we paid the price for it. Dowd was also the captain at St. Ignatius High School in Cleveland. His senior year, the Wildcats won the Division I state title. His first season at Dayton, the Flyers won a PFL title. 
we're tired of not winning championships, uh, to be honest. Um, that's the expectation in this program, and we know every year that we don't, we're letting down everyone that's ever been a part of this program. So we know what this year means, especially this senior class coming up. They have not won a, had a chance to win a championship yet, and I know that eats at them every day, the way they work in the weight room on the practice field. Um, so this team, you will see us play with a little more aggression, a little more chip on our shoulder because we know it's, it's do or die. Five years in the program, and Pat finally knows that this time around will be the last. I've thought about it, but I try to keep that in the back of my mind. I don't want that to affect me too much right now. You know, I treat every game the same way, regardless as it's my first or my last. Um, you know, I go out and I give it everything I have. So uh, maybe I'll think about it in December this year. There is, there is something about flyers and defensive linemen. I remember Devin Langhorst a few years ago mm -hmm. was a sack machine. You look at this guy against Drake last year, had six sacks in one game. Uh, I tell you, that's the best pass defense, Mike, is <laughs> if you can get pressure on the quarterback. And against Drake, Pat was all over their quarterback, tied an FCS record with six sacks. You know, you lose a captain who was a linebacker in Colin Manier last year. Down linemen, you usually don't have those guys as captains, but uh, this guy is, is pretty active. He it? is, and, and he's been that way ever since he's been at Dayton. I think that's why he was voted a captain, because the players can see his passion for the game and his work ethic, and he's just he's a strong leader, Mike, amongst everybody. All right, we are a week away, less than a week away from game time as the Georgetown Hoyas come to town. Coach will break it down in just a couple of minutes, so don't go away. Welcome back, everybody, and coach, as we wrap things up, it's a Georgetown team that I know you've already got a scouting report on. You guys have been dealing with them as they come to town on Saturday. Uh, it's a Georgetown team that you don't know a lot about, but you kind of have a feel for. Got a feel for them, plus they opened up yesterday uh, against Wagner, so uh, we'll get a little sense of what, exactly what they're doing, because it's a little newness to their staff. Their defensive coordinator became the head coach. They hired in a new offensive coordinator, which adds a little different touch to our game, Mike, because their offensive coordinator is a former player of ours and coach, Mike Newberger. No kidding. Who uh, played for us in the mid 2000s, coached with me uh, on my staff, and then moved on to different places. And this past winter, he's hired at Georgetown, so he's coming back to play against his old flyer hometown. All right, it comes up Saturday at 1 o'clock, and let's see a good crowd out there. And how about this? Check out. The bottom of the screen, if you're a coach who's got a Pee Wee football team, anything like that, if you call up the ticket office, they are going to let you and your entire team come in free of charge on Saturday to watch the Flyers kick off the season. That's a good idea. That's a great idea to have those Pee Wee football players out there to be a Flyer fan. And I tell you, Mike, they're going to see a great game because Georgetown has an awfully good offense with the quarterback back on defense. they got three linebackers that fly to the ball and hit people. If you're wondering, folks, you need to call Adam Shore at the UD Arena ticket office, and he yes. will, if you're a coach, make sure you call, give him your team information so he can get you on the ticket list because we hope to fill up that whole visiting side yes. for opening day against Georgetown on Saturday. What a great atmosphere for the players as they run out, Mike, and they see a, a stadium that is filled with Flyer fanatics. Preseason pick to finish second in the Pioneer Football League. Let's go one better than that, will you? That'd be good, Mike. All That'd right, for Rick Chamberlain, good. I'm Mike Hartsock. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you out there.